All right, folks, so we have a little segment here. It's the off-season. Cuts could be coming. So I have eight potential cap cuts to go through. We'll start things off with fullback Malcolm Johnson here. And by the way, prefacing this whole discussion with the fact that we have so much cap space, there is an argument to be made to not cut any of these guys. But Malcolm Johnson, fullback there, signed to a futures contract. His cap hit just a shade over $700,000. And no dead money if he were to be cut. As you see there, the cap savings equates to the cap hit there. No season stats because, again, Futures contract didn't play at all. And Malcolm Johnson, you have him at the fullback position, but you also have Kyle Juszczyk at fullback. So the logic being you really don't need two fullbacks. So you have Juszczyk, who's really solid in pass protection, run blocking, and catching out of the backfield. You really don't need Malcolm Johnson on the team. But again, really not all that expensive either. All right, name number two here, Don Jones, safety. And for Jones, a cap hit that is at $1.1 million, a cap savings of a shade under a million dollars. Of course, he tore his ACL, and we don't have any season stats on him because of that. So if the 49ers don't want to roll the dice with Don Jones here, you know, they don't have to. They can just go ahead and cut him. He's more of a special teamer than anything else. There is a lot of depth at the safety position as well for the 49ers. So Don Jones checking in at number two for potential cap casualties. Number three, Garrett Selleck. Tight end, made a lot of big-time plays for Jimmy Garoppolo towards the end of that season. Look, I would be shocked if he is indeed cut. You have a cap hit of $2.7 million, cap savings of $2 million. But at the end of the day, there's Garrett Selleck, and then, you know, the depth kind of falls after that at the tight end position. I think Selleck will probably remain there, but he is a name to monitor as we go forward. All right, next name, Aldrick Robinson, wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers. And this could be a situation where... Robinson just slowly but surely falls down the depth chart, especially if the 49ers bring in a couple of new toys in Jarvis Landry or Allen Robinson, Dontrell Edmond even. Who knows? So I think Robinson could actually be a cap casualty, bad season, and, you know, it's just a situation where the depth isn't there for him and Robinson could be on his way out. So he's at number four. So it's Malcolm Johnson, Don Jones, Garrett Selleck and Aldrick Robinson at number five. Earl Mitchell, defensive tackle here. And he was just simply overshadowed by DeForest Buckner this season. And Earl Mitchell, he's a little more expensive than the previous guys I talked about. A $3.85 million cap hit. Cap savings of $1.6 million prior to the June 1st cut line. The deadline, if you will. If they wait until after June 1st, they're is some more savings there if they were to cut Earl Mitchell a 56.5 pro football focus grade really hasn't been good since 2014 if the 49ers want some depth at tackle yeah they could keep him and maybe hope that he improves and gets back to that 2014 season but that is a long shot in my eyes he's a potential name to be cut from the San Francisco 49ers so he's at number five Earl Mitchell Number six now will stay on that defensive line, Elvis Doomerville. So we all know who Elvis Doomerville is, right? He is a pass rushing specialist. He's not going to rack up a bunch of tackles and all that good stuff. But he did have six and a half sacks. The problem is he's not getting any younger. He's 34. It makes sense for the 49ers to part way with him, you know, to pave the way for uh, – Tank and Aaron Lynch, of course, those are going to be free agents, so they're going to have to figure out the contract situ situation with those two. But if they do bring back Lynch and Tank, that will be huge for that defensive line. And maybe you can let Doomerville walk and just cut him and release him. You know, six and a half sacks, not all that bad. And again, the 49ers can afford a lot of scenarios here. So Doomerville remaining certainly could see it, but could also see him get cut. At number seven, I could absolutely see this guy get cut. Zane Beatles, guard slash tackle, had to go in and play a little tackle this year at towards the end of the season due to some injuries to that offensive line. But Zane Beatles, 
a big cap hit, $4 million. The 49ers could save $3.5 million if they do indeed cut him. And Zane Beatles, I mentioned him playing at right tackle this season, replacing Trent Brown. Dropped off big time, Zane Beatles has, since that 2013 season when he was really, really good on that offensive line. Has some versatility at guard and tackle and maybe a little center too. The only problem is... He's not really good at any of those three positions, so I could certainly see a scenario here where the San Francisco 49ers let Zane Beatles go. And then finally, Jimmy Award, safety. I mentioned there's a lot of depth at the safety position for the San Francisco 49ers, and this is a big-time cap pit here with Jimmy Ward, $8.5 million, no dead money scenario here. So there would be a savings of $8.5 million if the 49ers were to cut Ward. Of course, placed on IR after week eight with a broken arm. And you have some pretty talented players in that secondary. You have Colbert and Reed, who could perhaps be big-time contributors next season. Reed, of course, going to be a free agent. But if they bring him back, you may not need Ward at the safety position. Jacuiski Tart also had a great year as well. So a lot of talent in that secondary. Maybe you can let Jimmy Ward go, especially with that big time cap hit. So which player do you want to cut the most? Here are your options. Earl Mitchell, Zane Beatles, Jimmy Ward, and Elvis Doomerville. Give us a heart, wow face, laughing face, and a like, respectively, for the player that you want cut from the San Francisco 49ers roster. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there are your names to monitor as we head further into the offseason. I am Cam Rogers. Follow me on Twitter at MrRogers99. This has been the 49ers Report. As you go throughout the offseason, keep it right here. And we will keep you updated with all the latest news and rumors. Take care, everybody.